Hello, my friends. My name is Matthew Swanson. Oh, boy. You know what? We had this discussion where Matthew thinks we need to introduce ourselves at the beginning of every one of these things because there might be some people on here who don't know who we are, even though our YouTube channel is called Robbie and Matthew. And even at... Even for those of you who know who we are, I want to extend my warm welcome. Welcome. My name is Matthew Swanson. I'm an author. My name is Robin Fair. I'm an illustrator. And often exasperated <laughs> with Matthew Swanson. It's part of the dynamic of Robbie and Matthew, who are the people running this show today. Yes. Author, I don't know how you found us without already knowing our names. Obviously, Robbie and I have different opinions about the right way to start a show. Oh, look. I'm going to tell you something. What? It's not on the agenda. Ah. My sweatshirt says Kern. A lot of people ask me about this joke. What does it mean? Is that a is that a state in the Midwest? It is not. What is it? It means uh, in graphic design, which is which is how you put words and pictures together on a page or a cereal box or a cereal box or a billboard. Any, you know, any number of ways to combine words and pictures for communicating to an audience. Mm -hmm. um, it's a graphic design term. So kerning is making the space between the letters tighter or wider. So sometimes you want uh, real spread out letters if you're trying to make a big impact sort of big word. Um, sometimes you want them squished together real close if you don't have lots of room to try to fit them in. So kern, see this is a joke because when you unzip, you're widening the kerning and when you zip it up, oh yeah, there, kerning it's making it wider and there when you zip it up it tightens the kerning. People who are graphic designers they who see Robbie this in this sweatshirt. sweatshirt, they get so excited <laughs> because their world is full of terms that not many people know. Yes. So in any case, Robbie, thank you for that pleasant You're digression. Welcome. Here at the beginning of the Matthew and Robbie show. Did you hear that what I said? Is the false. Matthew and that Robbie is not show. What this show is I'm called. gonna rename this show. <laughs> We're gonna have to make Drew write a new song. What does this say? Greetings and warm welcome. Do you feel, feel warmly welcomed? Friends, I also said to Robbie, at the beginning of the show, I'm going to make an announcement about what we're going to do during oh. the show. So friends, we're going to read The Girl with Frogs in Her Ears. Some of you have experienced this book before. Let's move on to the second agenda item, which yes. is revelation oh. of coming redundancy. Now, revelation, revelation means a realization to know something or that you didn't know reveal. before. Or to reveal. I am telling you something. Redundancy means something happening more than once, mm -hmm. okay? So the redundancy for some of you is that we're going to read the same book again. I have a confession to make, my friends. Even though Robbie and I have made a lot of books, we've only made 15 picture books so far. Yeah. Which some might say is a lot of picture books, but some of you who are saying, why are you Why repeating are you yourselves? That one again? We've got about two and a half weeks of yeah. content here, my friends, and we're going to have to repeat ourselves. We're but, going to try to say different things. Yes. We have, Here's the thing. To what? None of you, or very few of you, have this book in your homes to read at your will From at any time. what we know about children that we've met, they yes. enjoy reading the same book more than one more time. More than once. So, so we're going to read it again. If you are the type of person who will not experience a work of literature more than once... Mm -hmm. You That's might, okay. You, might, you but, can go do something else. But right we're going to do something different this time around, yeah. which is after we, after we read each book, we're going to go back through it again, kind of quickly, but we're going to point things out and mm -hmm. we're going to answer your questions. So as we go through The Girl with Frogs in Her Ears this time, I want you to say, why in the heck did they choose to have 17 arms on the ogre? Or why did Robbie make him look like that? Or why Eggplant Mountain? You know, Gosh, there's various... I don't think we're going to have any good answers to any of those questions. I have we'll great try. answers to all of those questions, but I want you to stump us. I want you to come up with questions mm. about why we decided to do what we did as we made this book. All right? Even all if you right. don't actually have questions, make them up to flatter us. Yes. Okay. Here we go. What does that say? Theme song. Theme song. That's something that I'm we can do. It. All I'm right? ready for it. You expect to hear the theme song. The theme song is redundant because we play it every time, but you still enjoy it because it's brilliant. And it is not the Matthew and Robbie show theme song. What is it? It's the Robbie and Matthew show theme oh, song. Oh, fine. And Matthew, the Robbie and Matthew show. Whew. I feel I like, I feel like you end. started that. It, 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 it's, it, 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 it just repeated. Oh, again, a little too, here, what does this say again? 
Theme song again with dancing. I think that every single show we need a little bit of dancing because it's good for you to I burn to turn up the that, that those ATP, those adenosine triphosphate, which We're, are the little beats of energy that course through your body. Let's do it. Let's burn it up. Burn it up Brent. for ten for nine seconds. Now this is not necessarily written as a rock song. It doesn't have a driving bass line. One might argue that Drew should have thought about that, but he didn't. Thoughtlessly, he created a song that's not really appropriate for for dance club dancing, but we're going to do it anyway because we're flexible. I was tired of standing there in a half. All right, here we go. Squat. We're going to start the Matthew and Robbie show theme song. Here Boo. we go. One, a two. I'm going to add the bass line myself. Oh here, my we gosh. here we go. Here we go. The Robbie and Matthew show. Ooh, ah! Almost. I almost got it. All right, Robbie. Oh, oh, oh. Well, okay. Sorry. I mean, so at a certain point, just redundancy up. just gets a little bit hard to bear. All and right, turn so friends, the repeat. what do we have here? We have drink water. That's an important oh. part of every show here. Yep. Grab your glass of water. I hope by now you have habituated yourself, which means establish a pattern and habit. Um, this is your glass of water, Robbie. Oh, I'm handing it to you Thank like you. a thoughtful gentleman. On your marks, oh get set. It's not about how fast you do it, Robbie. But if you do do it faster, you're a better person. Are you ready? Don't mind me. I'm just going to build an entire fortress out of sugar cubes while you drink your water. Because I have a couple of weeks before you're done drinking your water. <sighs> We're not judging you, Robbie. We're not judging you at all. Next, Robbie reads The Girl with Frogs in Her Ears, which is, for some of you, going to be a redundant experience. Hopefully an enjoyable one. Sometimes upon reading a book Ooh. or watching a movie or looking at a piece of art for the second time, you're able to you notice see things. Different. That's right. Mm. So this is in fact not redundant at all. No. Your second experience is a different a experience. A whole new experience. All right. Am I reading this? Are you reading this? Who's reading this? According to the agenda, I was going to read it. Here you but, go. You didn't oh, read it last time. All right. So this is another reason why this is a different experience. You're going to get Robbie's take oh, on the girl with frogs in her ears. version of the girl with frogs in her ears. Might be a lesser take. I don't know. I can't make any. Oh, look there. We're small. She's big. That's Vera. Yeah, yep. The girl with frogs in her ears by Matthew Swanson. And Robbie, and Robbie Bear, Bear, which is why it's the Matthew and Robbie show. All right, are you ready? Wrong. Oh, okay. All right, I'm yes. ready. All right, here we go. I'm gonna switch the first slide for you because because okay. you're generous it. like that. There we go. All right, here mm. we go. Get ready, but brace yourself, my friends. This is gonna be like a roller coaster with firecrackers on it, and also tubas. Oh. Does that seem that appropriate? That sounds very much more exciting than this book. But that's make okay. it exciting. That's Rise okay. to the challenge. All right, I'm, here we go. I'm gonna All right, do it. here we go. Little Vera was an only child. Long ago, she'd had a brother and a sister, but they'd been missing for three years, and Vera had almost forgotten about them. Vera had frogs in her ears, so she couldn't hear when her mother told her to make her bed. I beg your pardon, Vera would say. I said, make your bed, her mother would say. But since Vera had frogs in her ears, Instead of making her bed, she went to the river and threw pebbles at the barges floating by. When Vera got hungry, she went home and sat down at the table for lunch. But because she had frogs in her ears, she didn't hear when her mother told her to wash her hands. I beg your pardon, said Vera. I said, wash your hands, said her mother. I'm sure your mothers are saying that quite frequently these days. And your fathers and your grandmas and your uncles. Yes. And that strange man in the corner. <laughs> Is that Matthew, the strange <laughs> man in the corner? All right. But because she had frogs in her ears, Vera ate her onion sandwich, potato chips, and dill pickle with dirty hands. Boo. After she finished her lunch, Vera walked to the center of town where a bunch of people were gathered around the mayor. He was saying something, but because Vera had frogs in her ears, she didn't know what it was. Suddenly, the mayor looked right at Vera and asked her a question. I beg your pardon, said Vera. I said, we're looking for someone to conquer the big-headed ogre of Eggplant Mountain using only a toothbrush and a bench playing card. Are you willing to do it? Because Vera had frogs in her ears, she couldn't hear the mayor. But since he seemed so nice and important, she nodded anyway. The mayor clapped his hands with delight, and all the townspeople cheered. 
which made Vera very happy. But she didn't know what was happening when the mayor handed her a toothbrush and a bent playing card. And she had no clue what was going on when he drove her in his jeep to the top of Eggplant Mountain. And she had absolutely no idea what the mayor was saying as he pointed anxiously at something right behind her. I beg your pardon, said Vera. But the mayor got back in his jeep and drove away as quickly as he could. Vera turned around and looked. There was an ogre with a gigantic head and seven tiny arms. Vera and the ogre looked at one another. Neither one knew what to do. Vera wanted to talk to the ogre, but since she had eaten onions for lunch, she decided to brush her teeth first. Once her teeth were fresh and minty, she went over to the ogre and shook each one of his seven hands. The ogre was so pleased with Vera's fine manners and minty breath that he taught her to play a game called Simple Jim, which required balancing a bent playing card on the bridge of one's nose. This part is the bridge. Right? Well, I think, or is yeah. the whole thing the bridge? I think, I think this is the bridge. The bridge is... Oh, the whole, the whole thing. I think thing. that area is the bridge. Part. I think okay. so. Because it's the bridge between the tip and the forehead. It's like I see. it's crossing the river. I see. Of the eyes? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that was very poetic, Robbie. <laughs> crossing the river crossing of the, the river. eyes. I'm your, going to write a book called that. The bridge of your nose crosses the river of your eyes. Okay. Vera and the ogre played Simple Jim for three weeks straight and became best friends. You're my best friend, said Vera. I beg your pardon, said the ogre. But Vera couldn't hear what he was saying. I beg your pardon, said Vera. They went back and forth like that for a long time. I beg your pardon? 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 Eventually, Vera realized that the only way to let the ogre know how much she liked him was to give him a really big hug. Vera hugged the ogre so hard that something popped out of his ears. It was Vera's brother and sister. OMG. <laughs> Hi, guys, said Vera, reaching out to give them a hug. But they ran screaming down the mountain without even saying hello. Hi, guys, said Vera. Suddenly the ogre could hear the birds in the trees and the wind in the leaves and the gurgling of the nearby stream. It was the happiest he had been in three years. The ogre was so happy that he gave Vera an enormous hug. When he did, the frogs hopped right out of Vera's ears and hopped away. Now Vera and the ogre could hear each other, which made them even better friends than they were before. You are the best. No, you're the best. No, you're the best. No, you're the best. No, you're the best. That's what Robbie and I do every night. All day Before long. we go to bed, we just, <laughs> we just lie there complimenting you're one another. You're the best. Vera and the ogre decided to go down the mountain so that Vera could say hi to her brother and sister. But as soon as they walked into town, everyone screamed and shrieked and shouted. Three different ways to say sort of the same thing. <laughs> It was so loud that Vera and the ogre had to put things back in their ears. Which is how they preferred it anyway. The end. The end. The end. All right, you guys. You had a homework assignment. You were supposed to come up with some questions. So let us go through this book again. We're going to point things out while you write your incisive, hard-hitting, probing, trenchant questions down in the sidebar. I'm going to see them pop up at any second, aren't I? I can't wait. I think they're still um, in the process yes, of listening to the book. So, are, all right. Well, yes. So we're going to start. Robbie? Yes. How did you feel when I handed you a story that was called The Girl with Frogs in Her Ears? What did you think even I before you delighted. read it? I was delighted. Why? I was delighted. Why, why was that a title that, you, that appealed I to you? I think because, um, well, 
It seemed like something inappropriate. Like it, like it's probably teaching kids the wrong thing. Oh, and you like teaching the kids the wrong uh, thing? I, I, you know, I sometimes do. Yes. As <laughs> as a writer, and maybe channeling an editor, mm-hmm. a title. What should a title do? A title should interest you, mm. and a title should ideally surprise you. Well, there's different ways. Did you a, pick the title first, or uh, did you write the book? First? I did nothing but listen to my heart, and those oh. words came out. I wasn't being strategic about it at all. Mm. But I do think that the thing that's good about this title Mm -hmm. is that it surprises you. And it puts a picture in your head. And hopefully it makes you laugh a little. It's surprising. It's not what you expect to have some. And you you might say to yourself, why does the girl have frogs in her ears? Well, in fact, Beth says, why'd you pick frogs? I don't know, Beth. (laughs) I don't know. I think I liked the way it sounded. And it seems like frogs are a little bit slippery and squishy. And so it was possible... I like DJ's question. Okay, let's hear it. Did Vera's parents not know their kids were missing? Um, we don't get access to Vera's mother's emotional state or inner monologue, DJ. She, she is not... The parents... The, the father is never mentioned. Well, we don't even I know mean... if he's in the picture. Um, but with the mother, we don't know. This is probably very traumatic for the whole family. We are experiencing this story through the lens of Vera's experience. And so we don't know. I assume that the mother is very upset and will be very pleased when they return. However... There's something not very realistic about this story because yes. when the brother and sister pop out of the ears, they seem to be okay and careful to run down the hill. Yeah. So unless they just feasted on earwax oh, for gross. two years, gross, I, gross. I mean, I don't know what they ate. Gross. We have to suspend that our disbelief, disgusting. which means that you have to let certain things that aren't very realistic just sort of go. Now, see, here's think, a question. What is the question? Why were they gone for three years? I think there's a good answer to this. I think, was it three years? Yes, it was three years. Um, where? Let me see. Oh, I don't have the words here. Um, yeah. Why? Well, Robbie, if you think there's an answer, I go for it. I think there's an answer. Why? Uh, I think it was because we needed Vera to be young enough to be a kid, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But th- more than three years, and Vera would have been like a baby right. or not born before how, her. How old do we think Vera is in this story? That's a good question. I don't know. She's seven? I would say like seven or eight. Seven or, or, or eight? So yeah. she was four or five when yeah. the disappearance happened? Yeah. So, so she was familiar with her brother and sister Enough to vaguely remember them, right? But not um... not as deeply traumatized as yes. she might have been. Yes. If we're really going to psychoanalyze the, <laughs> the, the the story, what other questions we have? Are you really going to write a book called "The Bridge of My Nose Crosses the River of My Eyes"? Um, that is a it's a distinct possibility. It's the kind of book that I would write because that title would live up to the expectations I set for titles earlier of a title being surprising. Also beautiful. There's something lyrical about the bridge of my, no- of my nose cover- crosses the river of my eyes. So, yes. I think, is that Beth asking that? Trying no, to stir that, things up? No, that was from Emmett. That was for Emmett. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to, and perhaps I will write it and check back to you. Maybe it's yeah. going to be a short, short story. Maybe that's my homework. Yes. Robbie, do you well, want to give that to me as a homework I was assignment? I say there's other homework, too, though. Book two of the Girl with Frogs in Her Ears, oh. The Continued Friendship. So what happens once they go back to Eggplant Mountain? And our pals. Well, you know, if you're going to write a story, you guys, Mm -hmm. typically what happens when you write a story is there has to be some sort of conflict. All right? So if the next story starts with the ogre and the girl already friends, something has to happen Mm. to create a wrinkle in their friendship or some sort of challenge that they have to meet together. Mm. But stories where people just sit around happily saying you're the best don't end up being very compelling and don't turn into timeless classics. We need to think of some sort of... So what would it be? What would the, what would the problem be? Maybe you guys can tell me mm. if I'm going to write Girl with Frogs what in Her Ears. What kind of conflict are they going to have? Two. Are they going to yeah. have an argument? Does or the, is somebody else going to come in and disrupt their well, friendly friendship? Well, look, look. We, we, maybe we've set the terms for the sequel oh. right here at the end because at the end, what do they do? They put the mayor the and mayor. some unnamed person mm-hmm. in the ears. So maybe... With lack of civic leadership, the town falls into disrepair. Or maybe he was an ineffective mayor, and the sister and brother take over, and they start a a robust economy based on giving away free ice cream. I don't know. There are possibilities here implicit in the ending that we have not yet considered. It's almost kind of a cliffhanger, potentially. So I could see the possibility of picking up this, this, this very promising franchise and charging forth. Um, thank you for that strong idea. I'm well, telling you, yeah. you assigning these guys homework is great. We've well, gotten so many good questions. You guys are here. doing better you than the older kids who excellent. balked at their homework. Yes. All right, what do we have? What um, do we have? Twain asks, "Why did you draw the ogre so round?" Oh, that's a Robbie question. I'm that throwing that one over to question, you. That is a good question, Twain. And here's should the I, thing: Should I go to? There you go. Is that a good uh, one? There you yeah, Yes. Right. So I drew him partly so round because his body needed to be big enough to have seven arms mm, attached to it. Right. So I wanted it to. Uh, 
Yeah, I needed I needed enough room on his body to draw all those arms. Uh, the other reason I think was I, for some reason I think of ogres as having big lunky sort of blockheads. Is that did I just make that up or you, is that standard? Do you, do you know what you can do as an illustrator? You can you just, can make, just make that up. I think that the category of ogre is wide, and different authors and different illustrators yeah. have interpreted ogre very differently. Why do so I Shrek think... is an ogre, right. right? He doesn't have a giant blocky head, does he? I'm, I'm just well, he's got a pretty big head, but it's more proportional to the rest of him. Yeah. Than, uh, but Robbie wanted to exaggerate him. Plus, also there, there needed to be a big contrast between Vera and the ogre. Yes. Because the premise is that they have not many things in common, and yet they come oh, together oh, oh. to be friends the anyway. The other reason yeah. why I wanted him to have a big head mm -hmm. was because he needed to fit children in his ears. Right. And if your head is not large, yes. then a human doesn't fit yes. in it. May I move on? Well, first of all, may I apologize mm. and say, Audrey and Marie, we, we did not attribute the frog question to you, yes. and I want to thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you for sending us the yes. amazing tiny mama pictures. You yes. guys made amazing tiny mamas, if I may digress for a moment. Anyway, thank you for the great yes. question. How did the ogre get the brother and sister into, into his, ears? his ears? If you guys don't mind, I will fit Robbie into my ear right now, and you'll, you'll see. It's, a, it's sort of like that, except my head isn't big enough to, to fully support Robbie for three years. It just, he she, had very wide ear She canals. can just go in there for a minute. Mm. Um, I think basically he picked the brother and sister up and just nope. just put them in there. Like I, I wear earplugs at night yes, to block Matthew out the sound. Yes, earplugs at night. And, and these are just human and earplugs. If I were huge, I could use mm -hmm. people. It wouldn't be nice. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be thoughtful. I wouldn't do it because I'm nice and thoughtful if possible. Um, what does Vera put in her ears at the end? Um, oh, I think she put frogs, frogs back in her ears. She's accustomed yeah. to frogs. It's yeah. just the way the way it is for her. Yeah. Oh, DJ is volunteering to help you write book two. Oh, and we also have Miss Robbie. Why do you your, your girl why, characters? Why do my girl car characters always have pigtails? Now is he making a gross generalization there based it's a on limited data? I yeah. mean, Moxie has pigtails. The girl with frogs in her ears. You know what? I realized the girl with frogs in her ears is a combination of Moxie and Milton. She has oh. the big glasses that Milton has, and then she has the um, the pigtails that, that Moxie has. Is that's Isn't amazing. That funny? So when you designed Moxie and Milton, you just took poor Vera and ripped her apart, <laughs> yes. right? You just stole all <laughs> of her best characteristics. Two people. I've got um, to say, you guys, I'm so impressed with your questions. Yes, you guys did great. And your generosity, DJ, in volunteering to uh, help me um, write book two, because clearly I'm going to need some help. Milo wants to know, do you guys have kids? Yes, we do. Oh, we have four of them, and they are all goodness. put away and locked away into another room at the moment. They are not in any way locked. They are busy with other endeavors. They have been very busy during this time of no school. Right now, origami is happening. Can we show you guys the amazing things that you can make by folding paper if you are detail oriented? Oh, and wait, I'm going to. What? You're going to do I'm a. Gonna yeah. go back Look at to this, you guys. Left. They just brought this to us last night. It's a cactus in a little planter. I mean, a, a blooming cactus. I don't want to be one of those fathers who's like, oh, my kids do beautiful things and they're great. But look, that's pretty cool. It's pretty great. I, I, I must say. You I, can look up on YouTube how to do that. It's I really don't neat. Remember. If you want, we yeah. can give you the links to that. Um, oh, Lamb and Turtle has pigtails. Well, All right. Well, like thank you. Tails. Wait, where's that succulent plant? It's somewhere else. Okay. We have to do that some other time. You, with I'm origami. worried about the agenda. Oh, I'm well, worried about the agenda. Has that ever happened in the history of Robbie and Matt, the Matthew and Robbie show? <laughs> mm -hmm. That Robbie... Has worried about the agenda. Are there any more questions? All right, let us know. Story time agenda. We're going to move on to the next item. We're going to go through the book again, pointing things out and answering we questions. We did that. Did you point things out? I don't feel like you pointed anything out. Come on, Robbie. All right. Live up right. to the agenda. Point some things out. Let's just go through. Um, if it makes you feel any better, Robbie, there is very little left in the agenda. Okay. So um, we haven't taught you guys how to do simple gym, and we have a biography oh, I, at the end of this book. I need to get a card. So oh, please. Okay. Um, and point some out. I'm just going to go through and point some things out. That's what that's what's on the agenda. Um, let's see. Uh, well, one interesting thing is this is the very first book, the very first picture book that we did in the Bobbly Books series. Um, and so I liked this method of um, having these sort of cut out silhouette shapes. Do you guys know what silhouettes are? It's just sort of the flat outline of a shape without any of the details in it. So like you can see that there's a bridge here and there's a building up here and stuff. So I was testing this out and it's um, a technique that I started using in a much more complicated way in further books. So everywhere when I look, Wonder especially. Everywhere yeah. Wonder is mm -hmm. a very a much more complicated way of doing this. The Real McCoys, I also do this except I do it in black and white. But um, 
it's interesting for me to look at because I realize how sort of sloppy I was about everything. Here's a funny thing. Like, you know in the movies when there's a crowd that wants to, like, I think in... Um, Beauty and the Beast. In Beauty and the Beast, the crowd comes and they've got pitchforks and they're chasing the beast yeah, down and they yeah. want to get rid of them. Yeah. So uh, I have one pitchfork and a broom, but then I also have a, a cane <laughs> uh, and Abraham Lincoln back here with his top hat. Oh. And a lollipop and a crutch. And a crutch. <laughs> I couldn't think of other things that people might be raising over their heads awesome. in outrage. Awesome. Um, Did you start at the back and pointing no, things I out? No, I just sort of randomly started. I love Eggplant Mountain. Let me. Where's the version of Eggplant Mountain with the road going? It's up coming up. Yeah. You want to talk about negative space? Yeah. Yeah. So where is it? Keep back. Keep going. There, there you it go. is. Yeah. Uh, so here's Eggplant Mountain, and the thing that I like about this is how. Uh, I've made the road wrap around the eggplant, but it's actually, I didn't draw a road. I just cut out of the painted part. I cut out so there's like a white spot that shows the road. The, like the pointer here? Yeah. See, so, look, you guys, look, this is not something that Robbie drew. It's something that she something didn't that draw. that I subtracted. I and kind what is of that erased called? out of it. So that's called using the negative space. The yeah. negative space is kind of the white part of the page. So I think what I like about this is that the road starts out being positive. It's actually painted. And then when it comes and loops around, it turns into negative space. But it absolutely makes this eggplant look more three-dimensional, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It makes it look like it's Well, here, let's compare it flat. to another place where we see eggplant right, mountain later the end. well there's one right yeah. that's just a silhouette yep. it's not three-dimensional it's very flat but since you've already established it as three-dimensional i think the yeah. eye kind of is there another place here i think at the very end yeah there you go. oh there you go so yeah that's the same view of it but without the, without the road, the road wrapping around up. it so and the reason why the road is in the first one and not in the last one is the road was important in the first one that mm -hmm. was something i wanted you guys to recognize that they're driving up the mountain mm -hmm. this one it's more about the mountain and about um the characters and i don't want you to be distracted by the road okay okay yes uh, did you point out all that you thought you maybe I wanted to point out, out enough i think we're getting close to a time where we can do other things i would oh. like to show you another thing that our children made out of origami oh, hold on which is a succulent plant look at that now this one requires more pieces this i believe kato said is 12 pieces of origami paper but i don't know friends if you want some more plants that you don't have to water around your house this might be a way to do it. This fools me. To me, this looks like an actual plant because I'm not very good at telling um, fantasy from reality. That's why I'm a mm. fiction writer. Mm. I feel like I'm just telling the truth about things, even when I'm spreading rampant lies. So yes. in our other, uh, in our McCoy's cast yesterday, yes. I was asking everyone why eggplants are called eggplants when they look nothing like eggs. And somebody said, because they look like eggs. And we're like, and no, said, that's no, not why. They don't look like eggs. not true. Because look, eggs don't have sort of a floopy McSwoopy on them. They're no. more symmetrical. But it turns out what? that eggplants, that some of oh. the kids actually looked this oh, up for me. Can you me. put that on so I'm they can see it? I'm going to put this on so you can see it. The headline is, um, this photo unlocks yeah, the mystery. This photo finally unlocks the mystery of why they're called eggplants. They totally look like eggs. Strangely enough, yeah. this was in Cosmopolitan magazine. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> but there you go. So eggplants, um, the original European eggplant was actually much smaller and white. It wasn't purple. Um, so the, there's other varieties that are purple, and we've gotten used to seeing the purple ones, but the original ones sort of were white. I find that and, compelling and instructive. And also that eggplants, when they start out on the vine, they are egg-shaped when they start out growing. I don't think they grow on a vine. When they start out growing, they're egg-shaped and they're pale. Hmm. They don't turn purple until later on. Who, so there you go. Say the word for eggplant in French because I love it. Oh, aubergine. Aubergine. I just, it's, that's also a color, right? It is. Okay. It's aubergine. The color so if of you eggplant. want, if you want to go to France and order an eggplant, mm -hmm. say aubergine. Aubergine. Merci. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Yes. And then somebody gives you one, say merci. But say it like that. Merci. You got to mm -hmm. sort of, merci. Mm -hmm. No? Is that wrong? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to skip an item on the agenda. We don't have time to teach you how to play Simple Gym, oh. but we taught you before. And yes. if you want to know, we'll teach you next time when we read this again in two and a half weeks. Theme song dance party with hats. Overt appeal oh. to Drew, asking him to compose an original end of episode oh. theme song. I feel like we need a different song for closing the show. Hmm. I feel like you've already heard the theme song. It should be super exciting, to, too. Like, Or it should be a slow oh. dirge because we're like, the show is over. over. 
and it helps us all feel comfortable mm. weeping because that's what we want to do at the end of this mm. show. Because even though we've been excited for almost 30 minutes, basically we're, it's the saddest moment of our day. Except we're looking forward to the Robbie and Matthew McCoy's read along that happens which soon. is coming so, next would you guys please um, collectively wail maybe open your windows and shout in the direction of Tennessee Drew please write us an end of show, end of theme, show theme song if you happen to live with Drew apply whatever pressure necessary yes. to convince him that this is the best use of his time very loudly not cooking you dinner no nope. not giving you hugs nope. writing an end of show theme song yes. for now we are going to have a theme song dance party with hats all right so get your hats. I know you have hats around. If you, which, which hat do you want? Do you want the really oh, cool? I don't want All right. This is an absolutely straight bill. Vintage Kansas City Royals um, Super Bowl, excuse me, um, World Series, Stanley Cup. Matthew used to wear this hat in all earnestness. When, I, when I played my folk cool music. Hat to wear. When I wanted to be Bob Dylan and would accept no other alternative than being Bob Dylan, um, that was my hat. And this was, you oh, know. We're late for our next show. All right, let's do all it. Right. Um, and Matthew, the Robbie and Matthew show. Bye, everyone. End scene.